Uh, again, I'm Stu Dalton. I've been with uh, PRS since 1985 and an ARS member since 1985. There are actually some ARS sign-up uh, things if you're interested, if you're not an ARS member. But like I said, the scoring, you want for the exhibition form, hybrid T or Graniflora, to have this spiral center, and you want it to look in from the side like a triangle as everything lays down. So the bloom itself is sort of pointed in the center and lays down flat. And if I had the perfect arrangement here for a lot of great roses to show you, I could show you a lot of them that are like that. I don't, they're not all ready yet. I do have some things that could be displayed, and I have to admit, these are Trader Joe's and those are Trader Joe's because that's what I can get to, to fill in. Uh, but I also have to give a uh, shout out to uh, Susie Sedlecek. These are hers. And this one is getting close. To what you want. This just shows you that carrying them is actually an art. I'll talk about is, that did later. you say those are Susie's? Susie's? Yeah, Susie's Sedlecek. Yeah, she, uh, uh, I got her into roses because uh, yeah. she lived across the street. Right, right. So those are this it has a special meaning to her. Whoop. This has a special meaning to her because uh, it was one that her mother grew and took a cutting of and started. Oh, and uh, I, I uh, managed to have the name of it on my uh, thing on my uh, phone, but it's pretty good. Perfect moment. No. No? She, he, uh, she said no, so I'm going with hers. Uh, she's, she got it from her, her mother to her sister to her and left behind in the uh, place in Memo Park they were in. So that's where this came from? Remember? That's uh, right across the street. Her old house? Yeah, her old house. And uh, it has quite a few good attributes. Many of the roses here don't. Uh, but if you sort of look at it at the side, it has the bottom layer sort of flat, and it has uh, petals all around. It has a nice pointed center. That, that they're hard to come by. So that's what this has. Uh, there's also a version that's not fully open. Am I in the frame? Thank you. Uh, this is an example of a fully open. Now it's past its prime, but it, uh, the stamens must show. So if in the schedule you see hybrid tea fully open, this is what you are looking for. A form. Uh, this is not open enough. It's a nice rose. It would look good in the house, but it's not open enough for show. Now, how do you get it open? I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, there's a very, very sophisticated technique that I've been using for years. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's more open. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That's the first thing before you start prying it open. <laughs> like some of these that I had bought yesterday tight, and they're a little more open now because they've been opened with things like cotton balls, Q-tips, these are always in my kit. And if you want to go on uh, to see a video of that, I've shown it in uh, Pacific, uh, uh, Peninsula Rose Society YouTube. And then there's a grooming video, uh, if, if, if you forget any of this stuff. So these are, this is not fully formed, but it's getting close. If this were a day or two before the show and it was tight, I put it in warm water rather than cool. And then uh, I tend to use, if I don't have fluoralite around, which I don't, uh, I use a little sugar and a little citric acid. Uh, it uh, is almost as good. And UC did some research saying uh, basically stale lemon soda or lemonade, very weak, in the water for your conditioning uh, water. The citric acid helps as an antioxidant, the sugar helps as a little nutrient, and it can actually make it last longer. And if anyone knows what this is, uh, this may be butterscotch, and it may be Coco Loco, and it may be none of those. Those are the only two I've heard so far on it. This 
one she wanted to have me put out to people to try and uh, deal with. So that, that's about form. You notice form is quite a bit, it's 25%. Almost nothing else, well, nothing else on the exhibition is as important as form. Color. Maybe it looks more like uh, another rose than it should. Maybe it's not a true color, but it's the one that's in the garden there. And so maybe it was misnamed. That's the kind of thing that can, if it's named, if it was named perfect moment, and this isn't exactly the color of perfect moment, uh, then uh, you would have some points deducted as, or even disqualified if it was really off. I've had that happen. Uh, substance. You can tell some of these, meaning uh, this one, for instance, has a sort of wilty look, uh, lock, lack of substance. Uh, stem and foliage. Most of these don't have proper stem and foliage. Uh, if you turn to the back of the page, you can see uh, a couple that I took photographs of. Uh, the foliage there is a little short on the middle one. That's a... a um, Sunset Celebration, and there's a lot of foliage on the uh, Lady of Shallot. That's a David Austin room. Uh, but it's also evenly spaced around the bloom. And if you look at it from the top, it sort of frames it. Uh, and so that's what the term stem and foliage plus is it in proportion. It says balance and proportion. Okay, for a rose this big, what I would love is five. One, two, three, four. Not quite. It's not quite long enough. But uh, that's what uh, Lucia Morgan taught me, is try and get the stems r the right proportion. I've had them too long, I've had them too short. Uh, four is not bad. And you can sort of see this one's not too bad. It has some three leaf and five leaf sets below it, and it's sort of filled out. And that's 100 points for that. Now, if you go into the challenge classes, one of the challenge classes that, uh, uh, is, uh, for example, a pair of queens. They're supposed to both be exe exhibition form, and there's a trophy for a pair of queens. There were a couple of entries last year. They should look about the same. And so it says overall appearance. If one just doesn't look quite right and the other one doesn't look quite right, it's not just the form and the way it looks individually, it's how they look together. So some of the challenge classes, you might have three or whatever, and that's the kind of thing that uh, goes with the, 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 uh, the scoring. And then, uh, so that says overall appearance. 80% is basically what we just went through. And then the other is overall appearance. Now, what do you do if, like many of us, I know Carol and I both talked about this, right now you've got short stems. We haven't had the nice weather to make nice, long, vigorous growth. I've got short stems. I've got black spot. I've got rust. I never get black spot, but I've got it this year. And uh, so what do you do? Well, you've got options. Now, please, don't judge these literally. Uh, Martin, please, literally, don't judge them. <laughs> uh, I brought in an old, old, old English box. This is about uh, 25 years ago. Yeah, this is an English box. And that's for large. We wrote it extremely broadly, so any large rose can be there. A large flowered climber, something like that is a large flowered climber. Uh, that happens to be uh, 4th of July. Old Rose, this happens to be uh, Madame Alfred Carrier. And then there are a couple of <clears throat> ringers in here from uh, Trader Joe's. But, the, <laughs> but I was trying to illustrate something. It's sort of, I have them from dark to light, and I have them in different colors. This is an artist palette. Five different roses, different roses. The way we wrote the schedule, you could make this You've got one big prolific plant, it's got beautiful roses on it, you could put six of them. You can also be a little more artistic because, remember, what's the word? Overall appearance matters. So you could say, okay, 
weight flows down, you could put heavier looking ones, bigger on the bottom and go up. You can have color variations. You can have pairs uh, of roses. We've often done it with pairs of roses and when we show English boxes. And there is a little box that I have to repair and I've also had, it has dust in it now, uh, but there's no top on it and I have to replace the vials to hold water underneath. And then it has a little top and holes and you just take these short stems that don't have any nasty foliage on them, it's all uh, black spot and et cetera, and you can use it for, for that and it's in water in there. And so that's an example of what you can do, two of the things you can do with uh, a, whoop, a single row, uh, a single rose that is, uh, uh, or that doesn't have foliage. The other thing you can do if it doesn't have foliage is a floating rose. This one, actually I would have entered this if I uh, wasn't gonna use it for an example. This one's a really nice uh, teasing Georgia. It's a nice uh, uh, David Austin rose. And if you look at it from the top, which I can't turn it for you, but you can come up and look at it afterward. It's floating off the bottom, barely. And actually I need to add water to it because it slopped a little. And, but it has to be floating. It, it cannot be sitting on the bottom, which this one almost is. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be scrunched into a, a, a holder. And there are, I have a, a series of different sizes for different things. I guess this would have to be a micro mini. <laughs> but a lot of the minis go well in something much smaller. I bought a set, cheap set, I forget where. Yes? I have a question about the floaters. How much of the stem should you leave on, or do you take, can you take it all off? You can take it all off, but the stem has some of the capability to pull the water, so. Oh. Uh, and, and uh, it, it, it sort of weights the uh, bloom down a little bit. Okay. Uh, I, I tend to make sure it's floating though. That's the thing, because it would be disqualified or, uh, yeah. anyway. And you want to make sure all of these are named correctly. I know Patty asked me to go over the other thing that's uh, uh, on the other sheet that's over there. If you didn't already get it, the uh, how to, uh, how to uh, exhibit a good rose and that on the back of it has the same thing that was in the uh, monthly Peninsula Rosarium. Literally, it, it, it was my picture in there that, that I loaned to, uh, to Robin Rosenberg. She did a great job writing it up. It's very similar to the thing I wrote up for last year, and that's over there, another version of it, if you wanted. It's, it's what to do ahead of time. So, before the show, uh, oh, and you can check out the grooming video, it's on the list here if you want to. Yes? The, uh, the floating rose, the container can be pretty much anything you want as long as the rose is floating? Yes. Now, because it's a challenge class, overall appearance. Sure. So, you want to use cut glass, that's legal, uh, but they want it as clear, they don't want it as blue or uh, something that obscures, you know, doesn't have a stem on the on it, and uh, it, it, I think it says in a clear glass container. And it can be any variety? Any, well, there are, look in the schedule, there are different varieties listed. Uh, I think last year, you got the, yep, you got the best. We only give one best in the floating rows. The rest get ribbons and things, but there's only one best. But also, you can only, one, oh, it's not two roses of the same. For, oh, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. But two of the same roses oh. that disqualifies, right? Well, that should disqualify all the roses you exhibit, oh. uh, unless the judges are extraordinarily lenient. <clears throat> Thank you. And after seven years of not having judge shows, uh, we had a couple of those. Uh, I, I got called in to help. You know, okay, remove one <laughs> by the judge. Uh, she was very lenient because we were not, we were rusty. So you're saying if you make one goof, then you're eliminated from all your, all your entries? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, if I entered two of the same roses in the same class, right. oh. a 
vying for the best. Both of them go out, theoretically, okay. uh, but not everything else that you've entered okay. anywhere. Uh, you might get talked to by someone later, but <laughs> why'd you do that? Uh, and, and we had uh, both a novice and experienced people that had that problem. Okay. Uh, there are other things you can do out in the garden. I brought a couple of things. Literally, say I've got a slightly crooked neck. This is a soft wire. Uh, you can get a little bit from this and sort of wrap it around a, uh, a chopstick or a bamboo skewer you might use on uh, hors d'oeuvres. You can wrap it around so that it help, uh, helps it, like a bonsai, turn out to be straight. It doesn't work all that well, <laughs> in my opinion. But you try and look for the straight ones first. Some of these aren't. So if I put it in in that spot, it would be like that. If I put it in up, I'm doing this with Florence, put it in up here, it's going to stand up straighter. So that's something that just, to, uh, just to know. So you're saying in the show we can have that water support? No, no, no. No, it's for the growth. Right? Uh, only for the growth. And, and you have to take out. I better make sure. In a white rose, I left a cotton ball in there. <laughs> when it was being placed, and I, I think it was, uh, I think it might have been uh, Pam McGraw, or no, not Pam McGraw, uh, Pam Shank, who told me, you have a cotton ball in, <laughs> and she saved my, my bacon on that one. Uh, but uh, what the, the these things do is they force between the petals and you sort of start from the outside and work your way back to the inside and be very gentle when you take them in and put them out. After you take them out after a while, after a day or two, they'll do it. They'll just stay there. Uh, that's the good news. Uh, and you can do it out in the garden. That's the good news. You can bruise the petal, uh, you know, so be very careful. The other things that I use are blowing on it like you saw, soft brush make a brush. And uh, the other thing I didn't bring examples of, but uh, if you're doing a spray, if you go out in your garden right now and you see something that's starting as a spray, you'll see a center terminal bud in the middle that uh, right now is a perfect time to go out a few weeks, what, 18 days? <laughs> 18 days in advance. and Crack it off carefully, right at the base. It'll it'll sort of darken and heal over naturally. It doesn't heal, but it it looks better. Uh, and then if you want just a single rose, and you've got a couple coming from the side, you can take those off, and those will heal. Yeah, there's a little bit of a scar, but not too bad if it's done early enough. So that's how you get a spray or a single rose that, where it looks like that's gonna be a great rose. Um, read the schedule, and read the schedule, and read the schedule, and plan, especially for arrangements, of course, because you really have to think about those. Uh, yeah, I, I do a spreadsheet, and then I fill, have some blanks, and I say, well, that one could go in class 101, or that could go in class 130, or whatever, no, I could, that's not as, uh, but you can put things that you might enter it in. And then if you had three really great roses, you could say, oh, I can put those two in a class that has two roses. I can put those in a class that has three roses, or I can do a single rose here. You can look at it and strategize. Because a lot of times you've got one or two great plants and a couple that are, aren't so great. At least that's my experience. Uh, yet be approved. ARS names. Uh, if you don't have the handbook for selecting roses, join. Yeah, yeah hold it up, hold it up. That's uh, that's last year's, I believe, and uh, it's it's well worth uh, the. If you don't want to join ARS, which I suggest you do, uh, you get that free with ARS. But. Uh, uh, if you don't want to, you actually can buy it for ten dollars from ARS, but they charge like twenty for shipping <laughs> or something. Have they sent it out this year already? 
They, it was that, done in November. Yes. Huh? Yes, it was set up in November with the annual issue. Ooh. Ooh. Well, good luck. I know. Uh, but I just ordered extras for the, uh, the the clerk's teams to make sure they've all got them. And if there's any spelling questions, those should be in there. Right. The new ones. Uh, uh, and for the judges, I will have a uh, combined rose list, which has about 16,000 roses instead of 5,000 like in that. And there's some obscure ones uh, in there that if they have a question and they can't find it and they're not sure, we can at least see if there's a name like that, that we can't see everything. Um, just the new roses that is in the new book? That's one thing. Uh, they're, they don't usually change the type of rose that it is. It's a mini flora or a mini or whatever. Uh, mainly it's the new ones that are in the book. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but the spelling, Mr. Lincoln or Mr. Lincoln is a good example. If you look it up in your book, you'll find the way it's supposed to be spelled. Right. Now, most judges will let you buy and they, there's some leeway <laughs> Uh, in the garden. I hope I have this with me. Uh, maybe not. What I have is a tag idea. This works great. Take a piece of paper, slit off little uh, little uh, strips, maybe half. Scooch over. Oh. Take. Uh, sorry. Uh, Take a little piece of paper, slit off a, a, about a half inch or an inch, and then fold it over, take a scissors, cut it. And what you've done is the same thing that you're gonna be doing on the- uh, On the sale tag. On yeah. the sale tag. Yeah. Uh, you can slip it, you can write on it, slip it through. And then when you find you have three different uh, white roses that you picked in the garden, or three different red roses, you say, was that? <laughs> what was that? Uh, you're taking, you put it up near the top, uh, and you can leave it there until you harvest it. But it, it's really a handy thing to be able to find them. I think I entered, I don't know, 30 roses or something, or something like that last time. It's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, they're hard to remember what you picked. So that helps. Might keep a notebook too. Uh, so. Pick long stems. The video shows really long stems because I had some in the fall when I was making the video. And uh, you can always recut them. It's hard to put it back on. So uh, if you cut them. Uh, condition the blooms. Conditioning, you can use that weak seven up, stale seven up if you want. Uh, you can do a little citric acid, which I buy on Amazon for cheap. Uh, and then a little bit of uh, sugar. And that simulates, when you're conditioning it, it simulates the uh, crystal light type of uh, saving. Uh, I use cold or put it, hello, hi Eleanor. Uh, and uh, make sure she gets one of the handouts if, if there are extras around. Uh, here's the other handout as well. Because uh, I'm going over to the handouts. Oh, I've got an extra one right here. Let me give you. Uh, but these I find are a lifesaver when you're. I'm not losing my memory, but I'm losing my roses occasionally. Uh, maybe I'm losing my memory too, but that's a whole other topic. And I store some for a long period of time. You could use a warm room like this. And, a, uh, and warm water if it's too tight. And that'll help open. Not just warm, not boiling. Uh, and you can use cold water or ice in the water to make them open slowly. And what do florists do? My mother was a florist. They refrigerate things. They refrigerate all sorts of things. If you have room in the refrigerator, uh, or a spare refrigerator, you can, you can do that. Uh, then transporting them carefully. I've got a bunch of jury rig things and one that I won, which is very nice, 
which someone built, as you can see, from milk cartons. And inside them carries bottles very nicely. And uh, this one managed to get out of the water anyway. Uh, but here I've got a few different types of roses. If you haven't seen Jolene Adams in the petal, as opposed to the flesh, we've, we've seen her in the flesh, she's been here talking. This is Jolene Adams in the rose. And it's a very nice rose. And I picked this Thursday and used it at the Master Gardener's uh, session with our, our display. And it's, it's, it's opened in the middle, but it's a pretty nice rose and it's nicely uh, spread out at the bottom. It's a mini flora. Then I've got uh, this one, which was a really nice short stem, uh, perfect center Gemini. It's in my front yard in a planter. But it doesn't have a long stem. And, but you can see it was pretty nice. Uh, it's just a little confused in the center. That's the term for it. It doesn't know where it's going exactly. Rose is that? That's Gemini. Mm. It's in different yards with different amounts of sun, it has different coloration because it's photosensitive. Mm. And it turns darker with more sun. Uh, but carrying it, this is great. It's stable. I can put it in the car. It doesn't tip over. I have had lots of spills along the way. I come over a few speed bumps. I turn a corner very slowly, and it wasn't slowly, slowly enough. I picked this up at Michael's. It's, a, it's for oh. things like paints and stuff like that. It's not quite as good, uh, but you can wedge things in here. And speaking of wedges, uh, the, I think I've got one in here. Where did you pick up that, pick that one? This one? At a NCNH uh, meeting in San Francisco that uh, I, said, oh, I hope nobody gets that before I do, and I got it in a raffle. <laughs> so, and I went, because <laughs> it's, it's, they're really handy. I have a couple other carriers that I made out of <clears throat> coffee cans or things and stuck them together and much yuckier than this. That's a technical term. Sometimes you can find those at the district conference in their half gallon containers. I have about three or four of them. Yeah, th th there are some really nice uh, things. By the way, Thanks to Pam Shank, if you want to carry in, you said eight bottles fit really nicely in this? Six bottles uh, sit nicely in this. This, this is a nice lid. Without the lid on. But the nice thing is if it, uh, if it fell, this is stable and it wouldn't get all over your car or whatever. So these are free, right? Yes. <coughs> Reuse is better than recycle. And it's hard to decide on the They're multiplying in the garage. I get one every three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's sort of the way it works. I think uh, uh, that's how my uh, shirts seem to multiply in the closet that I, I, I don't wear often enough. And I finally say, ah, goodwill. <laughs> um, but uh, the, so there are several things you can do. This automatically requires five names, because they must be five different. This one, you could hang on, uh, <coughs> you could put them underneath the, the, uh, the tags. This I fixed up as John Doe and ABCD, because I didn't have real names on these. But uh, when you fill out the tag, you have to put the varieties in, you have to put the class and the section and that's in the schedule. And then you put your name down here. And what I try to do is use stickers. You may get them from a charity you belong to. Uh, I've, I've found that there are for $6 or $7, you can get 500 of them uh, cheap on Amazon. So you just have them custom made. Excuse me. And then you can just keep them on. If you do this in uh, by writing on it, use pencil because water slops. The ink runs and it's a problem. So use pencil. Uh, we'll have some pencils there for people. So the English box. 
then that represents six different entries? No, it's one entry. It's one entry, but up to six different tags, if there's six no. different blossoms. No, the tags for uh, the challenge classes have more room to write the names. Oh, okay. So I'd write uh, Gemini, whatever that is, and whatever that is, for three in this case, or it could be all one. Right. Uh, but it's only one entry. Uh, any other questions on that? I, I want to go on to, uh, what the heck is this? They will be available. Somebody else built them long ago, and they can be very useful. Okay, I've got a very long stem rose. And I've got, this is ridiculous, but... Mm -hmm. And I put it out here and it wants to tip over. That's what it's for. Somebody complimented us on having these. Uh, they had not seen them in other societies. I thought we, all, we always had them, so I don't remember when. I think we had them when I joined in 85. They also are good when you have like a uh, major challenge class with a number of roses. And uh, you have a bunch of them in, in one of these sorts of boxes. We'll have these available too. Uh, and then they don't do as good a job on minis, but these should hold up most minis pretty well. Uh, by the way, these are mine. These aren't the uh, shows. Tabasco or sauce bottles. Half wine bottles. Clear. So it fits the definition of what we're supposed to use. And I just found, I, I didn't want to swipe any of the societies, and these work just fine for the monthly shows. Okay, uh, that's the main things I wanted to uh, say, but I'm going to pass around a couple of things. Uh, Judy Sleeth uh, actually showed me uh, a trick last time because I managed to spill water on a bunch of mine and ruin them and have to rewrite them at the last minute. And she was ferrying my entries back and forth. She pointed out, put these in a plastic bag and bring them before you attach them. Also, put a rubber band on it first so you don't have to do it. Have it filled out so you know what you're going to enter and what class and all that's done beforehand. You may stay up a little late in the evening the night before, but it's worth the time. Because uh, people are always, if they, you bring your roses at 9 or 9.30, <laughs> good luck. Because that's when the crush is. Uh, everybody comes in and wants to do them in. So that's a little bit about tags. There's more about tags in this. If anyone didn't get it or didn't see it in the Rosarian, this is something I wrote up last year. How to enter a nice rose for judging, and on the back of it is all about tags. Does anybody need one of these to go past the <coughs> you, you can, they have some of it. So, and by the way, name tags. They're cheap. And uh, you can just Peel them off, put them wherever you need them. Uh, I can't remember who I am, but other people can that way. Uh, so that's about it. And uh, I do have one other question. Unfortunately, you want to see lack of substance? That's lack of substance. I'm not quite sure what this is or was. It was a fully open. Uh, but it, it looks like a very pale piece, but it isn't. It's dead. It's, it's dead. dead. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> it it uh, didn't last uh, the six hours from when it was picked. Uh, it, and I think it was because it was out of, out of the water. But if anybody knows, it had a beautiful uh, set of stamens on it. And it would have been a nice open rose when I picked it. But it, it was near the end then. The problem is, we had uh, very little uh, we had very little selection today. Uh, I think everybody's late. I'm two weeks late at least. And uh, oh, okay. Yes. Um, so that shiny stuff that gets on the leaves is that sticky stuff is from aphids. Probably. Uh, and how do you get it off? Uh, you're not allowed to use anything except uh, the kinds of things you can do. Oh, I 
just found the thing I was looking for and had to go home for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, anyway, th this uh, is an old t-shirt, uh, nice, uh, it has a little bit of uh, uh, softness to it and... Let's do it. Come on. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> this, I keep doing that. Uh, this is an old t-shirt and what I use it for most is to clean my fingers. Because if you go like that on a leaf, uh, with a little moisture and, and one of these, you can keep cleaning your fingers and cleaning the leaf. It'll polish up. I'll show you. This one, by the way, has a black spot on it, and that would be a uh, de uh, deduction. This is uh, Madame Afflecaria, uh, an old rose. But you can sort of see the leaf is dull. Now, all I'm doing. Some of the new ones are really pretty right now. Some of them have pollen on them or uh, sticky stuff from uh, the, the, the uh, aphids. And so you can get that aphid stuff off You can get by see, rubbing see it. See it? Uh, it looks shinier than that one. Yeah. And that one has some, it. and that's just from rubbing my fingers. And then so I, I can't take Windex or something. You're not supposed to have any foreign substances. No pencils on uh, disbudding scars, no oils. How do they know? They know. They can smell Windex. Pledge. <laughs> no, well, that's true. But, pledge. But you, but, shine them up with pledge. Too much, too much Lemon shine. Fragrance. You want them to be characteristic of the, of the uh, rose. Yeah. Some roses are shinier than others. Yeah, and especially this time of year. They're nice, shiny leaves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, the uh, I'll do a, a quick version of taking these out so you can see. And there's one thing I forgot to tell you. See on this uh, florist rose, if you look on the outside, this is a pink and white rose. Oh, keep doing this. This is a pink and white rose. Uh, the uh, guard petals on the outside are distracting. So pull them down, put them side to side, and take them off. All of a sudden, no more green. Now, it's a little open more. If I had a day or so, I'd put cotton in here, and that would, especially on the outer row of leaves, uh, petals, and that would open it up more. I've been lucky, and I learned from one of the best. And the other thing she said, uh, Lucia Morgan. The other thing she said is, critters. Don't have critters. Don't have aphids, don't have thrips. If you look, and I only saw this recently, at what we used is on our uh, main white rose that we used on the uh, on this, uh, well, the, on the, the, the uh, on that, look very closely. There's a little black speck on the white rose. That's a thrip. There are a couple of thrips on there. You're out of camera. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we know who you are. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the thing, uh, and I, I keep forgetting this. That's the trouble with not having a camera person to follow me around as I wander. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of critters out there now. Thrips are the hardest to find, especially on, because they're especially attracted to white. You can see them on white, but uh, there are other little tiny uh, ad, uh, critters. Uh, I saw a, uh, on one of these, I saw a uh, ant, and another I found a thrip. And several I found aphids, but those are on the buds. One little tip on aphids, wash them off with water in the morning. Wash them off with a water spray. I use a uh, angled uh, wand with a fogget nozzle on the end, which provides a nice wide spray and go under, over, and around. And that really gets most of the aphids, like 90% in one pass. If you do two passes, you got 99% of them, and they're done. They don't come back, uh, mostly. <laughs> right now, they're on the tender green growth, so if you used a lot of nitrogen, you get more green growth. That's the good news. The bad news is you get more aphids, too. And once the ladybugs 
get there, they say, okay, I've eaten the ladybugs, bye. And that's pretty common if you try and buy ladybugs. I'm about done. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes? I, <coughs> you were starting to talk about a wedge or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I managed to uh, ignore it for a moment. <laughs> and here we go. What can you use? Just like uh, what Robin Rosenberg wrote up. <sighs> I wander. Sorry, Sala, sorry, those of you that are watching this later. We'll further back next time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a example of a wedge. This can be an example of a wedge. This is heavy duty foil. Anything can be, but as Robin said, don't use saran wrap, which you wrap around the bottom, because it tends to float to the top. If it gets over the lip, say I put a wedge in here, I could do that right now. <coughs> You sort of jam it in there, and you jam it in all the way to the uh, below the lip. There we go. The water came out, but it's below the lip, and that'll hold it more upright because it holds it against the side. This is just a piece of scrap packing okay. uh, foam. Do you think that one should be wired up and twisted up in the? Uh, it's a weak neck. Uh, in the yard, and so. But I mean, would it do better in the show if you took uh, it? I, 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 wiring up in the yard won't help the weak neck. Well, I mean, in the base. You can't, can't have it in the show. Yeah. Oh, you can't have it in the show. Oh, no, no, you can't have any props. Oh. Yeah. So Maybe I, 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 I he, he asked that question and I didn't like I answer. I on that earlier, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, but you can have it a little shorter, but this one actually was curved in the garden, and if I had had it, staked up in the garden for a week or two. Maybe it'll be a little better. I didn't. Uh, also, you, uh, you're you allowed this year to have stem on stem. Say I don't have a long enough stem, I can put stem on stem, but you will have, have points taken off. Uh, used to be would be disqualified. So now it's not a de uh, DQ or disqualification. <laughs> It's uh, just uh, points taken off. You What's the stem on stem? On? What? You scotch tape it on? What? Oh. How do you uh, I have an example, so we'll show you. Oh, oh, okay. oh okay. Stem on stem. Uh, it was growing and it oh, oh, attached oh, okay, and yeah. you cut off below okay. that attachment point. Okay. That's stem. Oh, we, we have an example to show. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Can you still do stem on stem on old garden roses? Yes. Uh, and it's not as. If you read the schedule, it says it's not as bad, but if two are compared, one has and one hasn't, the one that doesn't have a stem on stem wins. If they're the same. I'm not a judge, Martinez, uh, so we can talk about that then. Do, Other questions? Do you want to show people this? This is the schedule for the Rose Show. Yes. But, and it says in there, like I, I saw this too many times when we were editing it. <laughs> camera come, on, Lydia. Come back to the camera ring. Show it to the camera. Ah, yes. <laughs> Let the folks at home see. Helpful hints and guidelines <laughs> in the schedule. Uh, and that's on page uh, six, seven. Uh, and uh, it does say uh, things like you can't have two of the same variety in it. So read the schedule. Uh, the general rules. It does say somewhere, oh yeah, it talks about pinching out the terminal bud on floribundas, talks about stems. A stem on stem is not disqualified. It is subject to penalty compared to an entry without stem on stem condition. So that's exactly what it says, and I think what I tried to say. Uh, so read the schedule. Plan with the schedule. Hey, I could do this and I could do that. And I've got some new things this year. Uh, the English box is new again in our, uh, uh, in our uh, show this year. And we have uh, a couple of things that are, uh, that didn't get much uh, clout last year. Recent Rose Challenge. Used to be it was the ARS Roses, but they haven't had AARS Roses in a long time. So recent Rose Challenge 
anything uh, introduced 2016 to 2023. So look up the date of introduction in your little handbook. And if it's a recent rose, you can enter it in the recent rose introductions. So that's uh, pretty much what I had to say. Okay, great. Any more questions? And I will leave some cards. Oh, I, I didn't say this, but this. Oh, the camera. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, I, I, am, I am consistent. I consistently <laughs> walk off camera. Um, this is a Lazy Susan. Uh, it's a little cranky at this point. Put the, uh, say, I, here's how I do it. I put one of uh, these things. These things here uh, allow me to keep, keep it stable and it turns as I want to groom it all the way around. So it's handy for that. Uh, things you pick up over the 30 odd years, uh, 35 years of uh, exhibiting. <laughs> and if you need to trim uh, the petals, or not the petals, you need to trim the uh, leaves you need to trim the leaves. You can use a uh, sharp, small scissors, uh, makeup scissors, whatever. And uh, if, if there's a leaf here that has a hole from a leaf cutter B in the side, you can make a smaller leaf out of it, in effect. Oh, wow. And it, it will take some points off because it wasn't uh, great, but it will look better right. than the other one right. was damaged. Right. What happens with me if I take too many and stick them in a Carrier, I get torn leaves, right. and thorns will grab a leaf and, and pull it. You can trim it. Okay. 